I greet you in the love and the light of the infinite creator. Event is coming soon. YouTube channel. Here's the latest intel. The day of the event. Countdown to celebration. An examination of our active role in bringing the moment of breakthrough. Our world as a whole is changing and progressing at an every increasing pace. According to multiple sources, we as a planet have reached a crucial milestone in our progress toward breakthrough. Events have transpired on multiple levels which have made available numerous opportunities for multidimensional growth, healing, and advancement. With all of these developments taking place, we may wonder what impact these will have on our lives. We have received a number of disclosures on covert operations currently taking place which are focused upon the liberation of our planet. We hear that the crime syndicates known as the Cabal have fled for their lives, and that the Positive Earth Alliance is systematically dismantling their former power structure. It is only a matter of time before we say goodbye to the crimes of this fading Cabal annoyance once and for all. At this moment, we as a planet are faced with a monumental opportunity to remake our world and to build it on a foundation of freedom and equality for all souls who dwell upon, within, and around it. The intent within this article is to examine and to give perspective on the latest intelligence on the planetary and solar systemic developments, and to help direct our focus to the most productive and the shortest path toward planetary breakthrough. Our future present. In recent times, Multiple sources have given us a detailed picture of both the visible and the unseen planetary progress currently taking place. These developments have included the clearing out of negative influences, the strengthening of connections with positive, higher density beings, as well as achieving greater levels of knowledge of our present point on our journey of evolution. We hear from sources such as Dr. Michael Sella and Corey Good on how the developments toward what some refer to as the event are progressing. Recently, Corey Good released the latest intelligence on our planetary situation as he learned it to be. Following this release, Dr. Sala published his analysis on Good's information and gave some interesting insights into the situation. Here is an excerpt from that article from the website, exopolitics.org. Good went on to describe a meeting he had with a being from an adjacent star system whose planet had recently undergone a similar liberation struggle as currently taking place on Earth. He introduced himself as Mukha. He stated that his planet resides in our local star cluster and that his people are our stellar cousins sharing about 94% of the same genetics. He claimed that he was an ambassador from his system of planets to Earth. Mika then went on stating that his people have been enamored by our cultures and arts but have always been disturbed by our capacity for violence. He further stated that in the past that his people had resided on Earth as refugees during his own people's battle for freedom. He stated that it had only been a few generations since his people had overcome the tyrannical beings that had enslaved them. Then Good described the important role played by the Sphere Being Alliance in helping Mika's planet achieve liberation from its own elite controllers. Mika further stated that he had worked closely with Rotir Iyer during his own people's struggles, and that they had recently gone through a process very similar to what we are undergoing. He stated that his people didn't have as many challenges as are found on the Earth, but that there were numerous similarities. The information from Ambassador Mika correlates with previous information from Good that our solar system is closely linked with others in a local cluster of solar systems. This was quite an extensive article by Dr. Sala, and I would recommend reading the entirety at some point, but for right now, let's consider a few points. We have this individual named Mika who is said to be from another star system within our local star cluster. Mika says that his home planet has already been through the societal and energetic paradigm shift which our own planet will likely undergo in the near future. Among many, there is one particular point on the perspective of Mika that interests me. This point is on the subject of our imminent liberation. As we observe the state of our world, we may see a number of situations. On top of this perspective, we may hold various beliefs about the situations we observe. Some of us may view these situations as major challenges whose solutions are yet to be found. Some of us may consider each of the challenges to be works in positive progress. 
Some may have even gotten the hang of positive manifestation and already see these situations as resolved, healed and transcended, and are energetically bringing these realities into being. Still, there are some among us who fearfully ignore these situations because they have a difficult time holding a positive vision for our world. Whenever we find ourselves in a difficult situation, it can be easy to become anxious, and maybe even a little afraid. If we are at a lower point, we may worry about what might happen to us if large-scale change occurs. We may also be afraid of the numerous other changes which may precede or follow the ideal change we do want to see. I propose that it is little more than this fear of change that prevents us from improving our world instantly. Most of us are well familiarized with the crimes of this grumbling syndicate of psychopaths, and many of us have already moved beyond their reach of emotional manipulation. If this is the case, we may know that when it comes to the complete and total transformation of our world in real time, there is only one simple choice we need to make. This is to say goodbye to this cabal. The Nature of an Abuser We have heard from various sources that the relationship between the cabal and the rest of the world is much like the relationship between an abusive person and their partner, victim. The typical abusive person will be lacking in life skills, in substance of character, and will have little or no ability to meet their own needs, whether emotional, physical, sexual, or otherwise. Consequently, they may find a partner who is extremely loyal and will take all of the abuse and manipulation the abuser can throw at them. Abusers typically do this in order to steal energy from loving and nurturing people, as they have little or no energy of their own. Here is an article from the website mentalhelp.net which gives some helpful insight into why abusers abuse. Some abusers learned to abuse from their parents. Their early history consisted of receiving abuse themselves and or seeing others abused, one parent abusing the other or their sibling, etc. As a consequence, abuse is the normal condition of life for these people. Such people internalized a particular relationship dynamic namely the complementary roles of abuser and victim. They are familiar with and fully understand the terror of being the helpless victim from their own childhood experience. The opposite of being a victim is not simply opting out of abuse, it is instead, to be abusive. Given the choice between being the out-of-control victim, or the in-control abuser, some of these people grow up to prefer the role of the abuser. As they become adults, they simply turn this relationship dynamic around and start acting out the abuser side of the relationship dynamic they have learned. By choosing to be the aggressor and abuser, they may get their first sense of taking control over their own destiny and not being at the mercy of others. That they hurt others in the process may go unregistered or only occur as a dim part of their awareness. Still other people who abuse end up abusing because they have an empathy deficit either because of some sort of brain damage, or because they were so abused themselves as children that their innate empathic abilities never developed properly. Such abusers cannot or will not relate to other people as people, choosing instead to treat them as objects. In effect, they confuse people for things. They treat people as though they were there solely for their convenience and do not otherwise have an independent, important life. Abusers who treat people in this manner are very likely psychologically ill, and possibly medically ill as well. They may have an antisocial, sociopathic, psychopathic, or narcissistic personality disorder, and they may have anger or impulse control issues and substance abuse issues on top of that. Such people may abuse because of the benefits they receive from doing so, for instance, sexual or financial gratification, or the simple allure of power over other people's lives. This dynamic of relationship may be focused in the context of romantic relationships. However, the dynamic may also reveal the reasons why the group we know as the Illuminati or the Cabal behave the way that they do. Those who know the practices of this cult belief system know that quite often, the members of such groups are raised in an extremely abusive and violent environment. They are tortured, neglected and brutalized so thoroughly that many of them lose most of their ability to empathize with others. One point to note, in more recent times, it seems that more police officers have been trained not as peacekeepers, but as professional abusers. At some point, many officers were taught to intimidate, to threaten, and to impose control over everyone else, 
sometimes outside the boundaries of the law, and many times, verbal abuse simply comes as a natural addition to all the other aspects of abuse. These people are then given deadly weapons and sent out into the streets. However, with the situation as it is, it does not seem that such people are deployed for the purpose of preventing crime, but simply to impose abuse on the people irrespective of any crime they may or may not have committed. As efficient as such an abusive system reveals itself to be, one could easily conclude that this situation did not come about accidentally. Instead, this looks to be part of a planned takeover by cabal criminals. This must, and will change. Many of the senior cabal members may even be so extremely psychopathic that they have little or no regret for causing the pain and death that they do. As members are acclimated to the harsh, manipulative, and destructive practices of this group, they learn to emulate this abuse, and to impose it upon others. They are taught that they are superior to those who are not part of their numbers, and that their inhumane and abusive treatment of humanity is part of their duty to maintain control over the population. Both men and women with the proper imbalances can become violent abusers. They are made to believe that because of their lineage, their role on the planet is to control the common people in their behavior, their level of consciousness, as well as the size of the population as a whole. This is why we see this group imposing the amount of manipulation, destruction, and death on the planet as they do. We see this group poisoning our food, our water, and our air. We see them manipulating our global economy for nothing more than their own benefit. We have watched them rob and defraud the entire planet under the guise of fairness and equality all for nothing more than to sustain their own lifestyle of luxury. This group has manipulated the world into an interwoven scheme of corporate domination backed by the deceptive facade or fair trade. Behind this false money machine, they have placed programmed, military might so that anyone who opposes their global scam will be attacked and overthrown by deceived military powers who believe themselves to be fighting for the greater good. We have watched this cabal create provocateurs, cut out terrorists, and assassins who do the work which military can't do in broad daylight. Then to top it all off, this group will create propaganda to place the blame for their soulless schemes on their enemies, who are typically innocent of the accusations. Examples of past cabal initiated abuse of the people. Anti Geoengineering Legal Alliance files U.S. 60 day notice of legal action. The 10 worst toxins hidden in vitamins, supplements, and health foods. Top 10 toxic ingredients used by McDonald's. 70,000 food additives approved by the FDA, what you don't know will hurt you. These six corporations control 90% of the media in America. Upon considering these things, we may see more parallels between an abusive partner and the behaviors of the cabal. As it turns out, these parties have more in common than one might imagine. Once again, here is mentalhelp.net. An abusive partner creates a crisis in any relationship. Violence against a partner used to be called domestic violence but the preferred term that most use now is intimate partner violence. This is in part due to more people accepting the stereotype that abusers are male and victims are female isn't always true. When physical signs of possible abuse are present, it warrants further inquiry. Here are additional signs that a partner may be prone to abuse. Controlling behavior. When a person limits their partner's contact with other people and shows intense jealousy about where they've been or who they've seen. Intimidation. When a person breaks or smashes items in anger, destroys their partner's property or displays weapons. Threats. When a person makes threats to harm their partner or retaliate for something that was previously done. Verbal and emotional abuse. When a person berates their partner, calls them names or plays mind games with the intent of controlling their behavior. Upon reading this we may come to the realization that the cabal has imposed each of these abuses upon the entire planet. They limit our learning about ourselves, about the world and the universe around us. They used fake terrorist organizations to maintain fear, and to prevent dissent and rebellion. They constantly produce fear-based media full of jarring and frightening imagery in order to control us. They constantly create fictitious as well as real danger in order to keep us in line. Further. 
they have made the threat that if we do not maintain the abusive system as it is, then they will throw the world into chaos. In numerous instances, the cabal has proven itself to be little more than a dysfunctional abuser clinging to the population of the world for dear life. This group consistently creates an illusion of ultimate power and invincibility. However, their illusion of strength is just that, an illusion. The truth is that the strength they flaunt has been ours all along, and the only reason they had it was because they were taking it from us. The only reason we have stayed with this abuser is because they kept telling us that we were worthless, and they have subconsciously communicated and maintained this lie for ages. This was the lie that told us we needed them for our health, for our providence, our protection, and well-being. It was the lie that told us that we could not live without them. However, in reality, it was the other way around all along. It is they who cannot survive without us. It is they who have been separated from that which gives life, which maintains heart and soul, and that which maintains our human essence. By their own choice, they have lost their connection with Source, and they don't know how to get it back. So they act as a parasite in the world, taking as they please and looking for the pieces of themselves that they'll lost. However, in no way does their lack of substance obligate our victimhood. We all deserve freedom, and it is time for us all of us, to claim it. Liberation in Action Just as in any abusive relationship, a victim must consciously choose to stand up to their oppressor, to break ties with them, and to stop the cycle of abuse once and for all. As a planet, we all have an abuser to kick to the curb. This abuse is, of course, the cabal who has been mercilessly violating and killing everything on the planet for their own benefit. Each of us has the task of acknowledging the abuse, learning what has been done to us and ending this abuse for good. For those who have not yet learned to stand up for themselves, the scams of the cabal may be fairly intimidating. However, there are simple ways to free oneself from any abusive situation, and our world situation is no exception. Let's take a look at what MentalHelp.net has to say on this. Here are some additional suggestions to help escape an abusive relationship. Contact your local battered women's shelter and find out how you could use their services, if necessary. Elicit the help of a trusted family member, friend, co-worker or neighbor about your situation and develop a plan of escape. Keep a record of all violent incidences. Note all dates, events and threats made. Keep any evidence of physical abuse, such as pictures. Hide an extra set of car keys. Set money aside. Ask friends or family members to hold money for you. Pack a bag and be ready to leave at a moment's notice. Include anything that is important to you, such as identification, car title, birth certificates, social security cards, credit cards, clothes for yourself and your children, shoes, medications, banking information, money and important phone numbers. Even though this particular article is on the subject of women with the need to escape their abuse male partner, we know there are multiple scenarios to which this can apply. These are some key steps in breaking free from any abusive relationship. If we think of these in terms of having the entire world as the intended victim, and these cabal criminals as the abuser, we may realize that many of these steps have already been taken for the sake of imminent planetary liberation. The above list is basically a set of contingencies designed to give their former victim the best chance to escape the unhealthy situation. They involve creating a healthier alternative to the abusive situation, including healthy means of sustenance, protection, vital resources, and transportation which are independent from the source of the abuse. These steps are reinforced by a strong network of helpful, trustworthy, and supportive people to assist in the liberation process. These are very helpful steps, and in seeing them, many of us may have noticed their similarity to the way in which specific parties in our world have prepared for liberation. Many of us have heard of the Positive Earth Alliance which is primarily composed of Russia, China, India, South Africa, and Brazil. These are the countries at the center of the new BRICS banking system. These countries, in conjunction with numerous others, have all come together for the sake of defeating the cabal of Hegelian manipulators by launching multiple covert assaults against them. We have financial boycotts, 
multinational boycotting of imports, and massive hacking attacks which in combination, have brought the spanking cabal to its knees. We have seen the armed forces of Russia laying waste to the cabal-sponsored pseudo-terrorist organization known as Daesh or IZ. To top this off, we have a secret space program faction ready to deliver the final blow of the full disclosure data dump to distribute to the people, ending the entirety of illegal secrecy once and for all. Each of these assaults has been focused upon uprooting the multi-level entrenchment of cabali interests which have historically manipulated the United States and the world for decades. One point we may note is that it was never the intention of Russia or the alliance to harm the United States itself, but only to bring the financial powers controlling the U.S. to a low enough point where they don't have the power to harm the planet any longer. These are all extremely positive and productive steps toward the goal of planetary liberation. However, this effort to be free is not simply a choice for others to make. This step toward freedom requires an individual choice. With this choice comes the task of actively declaring our own sovereignty, of throwing the old and corrupt system off, of respectfully, legally and yet firmly putting abusers in their place. This choice would not simply require a verbal declaration though such a declaration might be necessary. This choice would require a real-world change in lifestyle, not simply for the sake of one's own lifestyle, but for the sake of the positive impact of all people. It would be up to the people as to how this took place, but in order for our grand change to take shape in mass on a physical level, choice of lifestyle must equally demonstrate such a change. These changes may require protests that go beyond what the normal protests have been. If these protests were a desired course of action, such assembly may need to combine the efforts of all groups who fight for worthy causes in America and elsewhere. There may be a need to combine the efforts of civil and human rights groups, of anti-war groups, of anti-hate groups, as well as groups that fight for legal and political accountability. By my observation, one of the main reasons many of these groups have been unsuccessful in the past is that they were divided. To add, if the powers that be stand to lose significantly from the changes demanded by divided protests, no change will typically occur. So instead of believing that criminals will automatically change their ways, these protests will be a direct message to the positive forces behind the scenes who directly opposed the cabal, and who have the upper hand on the entire cabal-based system. The message will not be a request for someone else to give us something we do not currently have nor will it simply be to make a single change here or there. The collective message of our unified voice will be, we are ready. Our message must be, the madness stops now. The abuse stops now. This childish game of Hegelian division, of deliberate warmongering, starvation, and mass murder stops now. The world will prosper and not suffer, and to these demands, no is not an option. This, or something to this effect will be our message to the universe that we are no longer dependent children who need abusive psychopaths ruling over us. It will be a message to our galactic families that they no longer have to avoid us due to our violent tendencies. It will be a declaration that will consist of more than just spoken words or words on paper. They will be the energetic shift that causes the event to take place. With the proper energy behind such a sincere declaration, we invoke the power to create a new world before our eyes. All that is required of us is to choose to speak them and to live them. In whatever form these messages and demonstration materialize, they must be heard, they must be public, they must be positive and productive toward the freedom which we all desire to see. With this approach, there can be no opposition. Though some may try, and some may dislike the fact that their world is changing, when the collective consciousness is directed in a positive direction, no opposition can stand. This is our freedom to claim, and once we choose it, there is only liberation in store. Now, let's discuss what may be in store for the human race and for the planet. Our Great Transition In his recent update, Corey Good shared some information that may shed new light upon the process which the human race may be undergoing very shortly. We have heard that the evolutionary change which is to affect our planet will be one so profound that very few of us will be able to imagine the scope of its impact. In a recent post, 
Good describes a number of disclosures which he says that he received from both ET parties as well as a good friend of his from inside of the secret space program. Here is an excerpt from the update from Corey Good. Corey Good Intel Update Part 1 The last few times we met had not been very cordial at all. I had basically been handed off to the Wrangler. The last I had heard of Gonzalez was that he was off with the Mayan group receiving emotional healing. When I looked at his face to judge his disposition, I noticed that he didn't have his trademark scowl on his face, nor was he tightening up the tendons in his jaw repeatedly. His face was completely relaxed with no expression as he looked me up and down. He then got a huge smile on his face and asked me how I had been. After a short greeting, he explained that from his point of view and experience of time, he had been away for almost six months. He said that the technology from the Mayan breakaway group is simply magical. I kept thinking about how blissed out he was acting and the remarkable change in his overall energy. He stated that he now knew himself, and had found a real purpose in life. He said he had tried to find a purpose in the military by dedicating himself to the mission, and doing whatever was necessary to accomplish it. He had convinced himself that he was working for the greater good, and was in the end a service to others type of person. He had fallen into the lower density trap of egotism and of being self-absorbed. He and I had discussed how T. Ryer and Carrie had asked me, once each, if I wanted to know who you were, who you are and who you will be. I had answered no on both occasions as if something deep inside me was telling me that I should avoid this information. Carrie even told me that the answers would change the nature of my personal relationships. I thought about my family, and have felt comfortable with that decision. When this occurred in my first meeting with Carrie, she replied stubbornness seems to follow you through all incarnations. Gonzalez said that his major breakthrough in his healing occurred when he answered yes to that same question when the Mayan group made the offer. He spent a little bit of time going into it, and encouraged me to do the same if the situation presented itself again. This update by itself seems to hold far more implications than one analysis could cover. The prospect of realizing one's own identity from within multiple past present and future lifetimes is enough to send one's head spinning for a good while. Personally, I have had the experience of learning about a few of my own past lifetimes that seem to have great impact upon this one. These were both profound to learn about, but at the same time it was as though I have always known about these past experiences on some level, and I have seen more than enough evidence in my life to convince me that they were generally accurate. In hearing about Corey Good's experience, it is understandable as to why he may not want to know about his past, present, and future identities just yet. I am honestly tempted to guess, but that is not the best idea especially for the personal business of others. In any case, one's past identity can be an exciting possibility to consider. Many of us have had so many life struggles that any change toward that of greater divine alignment would be nothing short of revolutionary. If there were any such change in my own life, with the exception of a couple, these could only lead to better experiences. So I would not at all hesitate to take the Mayans up on the offer to learn more about myself. But let's get back to the point I intend to make from this excerpt. The process which Gonzalez seems to have gone through mentioned in this update may be similar to that which we all will be undergoing when this shift takes place, whether by natural progression, or with help from groups such as the Mayan healers. We have heard from multiple sources that this particular end times moment will bring the entirety of humanity at least one step higher in consciousness, and that no one will be unaffected by this transition. I have taken this to mean that as whole, the entire planet will be ascending into higher densities of vibration, and though there may be a few exceptions, these people will be relocated to other third density worlds to complete their third D curriculum. There may also be a few of those who need a karmic balancing of some type in order to progress. This may happen for those who need it. However, for the large majority of humanity as well as the planet as a whole, we will be rising into a new height of vibration. According to the law of one, the end of every cycle of 75,000 years typically ends with some type of monumental change on the surface of a planet. In the past, this has led to the destruction of many different civilizations. However, according to intelligence from a number of sources, 
This is not to be the case with our own transition. According to Corey Good's update, the world will not experience the widespread destruction the Cabal expects. This event will not at all be one of destruction, but will be one of renewal and revelation. We may reason that if the Mayan group is providing healing for those who have become negative over time, but who still want to change, there is an overall goal of helping everyone to ascend. The main point I take from this update, along with the input of multiple other sources, along with my own intuitive impressions, is that our positive ascension is inevitable. To no one's destiny. In a recent article, I detailed one particular component to our present progression of events. Within this article, I discussed the hidden meanings behind the Georgia Guidestones and the way that this mysterious monument depicted the plans of the Cabal for population reduction and for world domination. Within this article, I listed two dates which the Guidestones seemed to pay special attention to. Here is an excerpt from that article with the details. August 16, 2014, Governor issues curfew after a state of emergency was declared in Ferguson, Mississippi, code August 16, 2014, USA Today, August 16, 2014. The article says 19th, but the URL says the 16th, indicating the original date of publication. Note. This date is specifically said to be the beginning of the window of time which the Cabal has to achieve everything they needed to in order for their negative agenda to come to fruition, according to insider testimony. August 14, 2016, the last day of the window of time the Cabal has to take over the world, according to insider testimony. This may be the reason why they have been attempting so hard to create chaos in the world in recent times. According to many sources, as well as much of headline news, the dates of August 16, 2014, and August 14, 2016 held specific significance. These were the dates between which there seemed to be an excessive effort by Kabbali interests to create chaos and riots in any way possible. However, none of them worked. This effort began with the prefabricated production we saw in Ferguson, Mississippi we then saw the creation of the Black Lives Matter movement which was then followed by a campaign of opposition to the other groups that were created. It may have been that many or possibly all of these groups and campaigns were initiated for Hegelian purposes in an attempt to throw the nation into chaos, though there were likely numerous people within these groups who held positive intentions. We have seen false flag shootings, senseless bombings, and murdering of innocent people in cabal-sponsored wars in Europe and in the Middle East. We have seen concerted efforts and attempts to sabotage the Brooks Banks as well as overt chemical warfare waged against the young and innocent. However, even with all of these efforts by cabal psychopaths, all of the time, money and energy that they put into causing these problems, none of it worked. At every turn, the crumbling cabal failed completely. As I write these words, it is August 19, 2016. We are past the date by which the Cabal intended to meet their sadistic goal of world domination and destruction. This time window was their last chance, and they failed to meet it. Instead, we the people have succeeded in creating so much positive energy that their negative timeline could not withstand it. If this is true, then our victory is assured, and our ascension is inevitable. However, our task is not yet complete. Commence Countdown there are still fires to extinguish which the remaining Cabal holdouts attempt to create. These people have not read the writing on the wall. They have not gotten the memo that the war is over, and that they have no hope of prospering while committing such acts. Our positive energy and our effort are needed to stand up and say, enough is enough. This is our world, and it belongs to all of us, and anyone who believes themselves to be better than others or who believes they are so superior and that they have the right to bully, brutalize, and kill for sport will not do so for long. Every last soul in, on, and around this world is equally precious, and it will not stand to forget this fact. In light of these developments, our positive and revolutionary task becomes clearer. All of the problems that we observe on a daily basis, all of the suffering caused at the hands of the damaged and disturbed will end, and care compassion, love, freedom, and divine universal connection will replace it. In order for this to happen, 
We must teach ourselves to value all humanity equally and without prejudice, preconception, or superficiality. We must shed the false beliefs heaped upon us by our former abusers, and instead choose to see humanity in a new light. There is no longer any place for bench warmers, or armchair critics. It is no longer enough to simply not be hateful, to not be a murderer, or to not be racist. It is no longer enough to dislike or to disagree with the state of the world. In order to stop injustice, hate, and separation, we as individuals and as a collective must oppose these at every turn. We must become anti-hate, anti-murder, and anti-racism. We must become lovers of life, both of our own and of others. We are to become caretakers for ourselves and for those around us, and in our newfound connectedness with all life, we will finally learn why it is we are here. We must show that we are ready for something better not simply by changing our beliefs and our opinions, but by acting upon the highest versions of each of these. In doing this, we create the breakthrough we have been waiting for. This is how we will see this world liberated once and for all, and this is how we will manifest and see our positive creation birthed into our present, now experience. We now hold the keys in our hands. We are in control of the next steps on the path of ascension. What happens next is completely up to our desires, our intention, and out action. Let's finish this race. Let's say goodbye to the abuse we have endured, and welcome in the world we have been waiting for. Thanks for visiting our YouTube channel. Please enter our subscriber appreciation $100 monthly giveaway. This is our way of saying thank you for supporting us. The link to our giveaway is below in the description. We're adding new videos daily. Be sure to check out our library for additional intel. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Also, visit our sister channel, FYI, for your information. Victory of the Light. Is coming soon. YouTube channel.